Let's get started with BitClavier. Now, first thing is uh, if you're using an external audio device, you need to make sure that that's set in the system preferences in sound. Um, now, I'm not, so I only have the internal speakers, um, so that's not an issue here and for most people. Uh, but if you don't set it before you launch BitClavier, it's not going to work right, and you'll have to quit BitClavier and start again. So we're good to go. Um, let me open BitClavier, having just downloaded it here. Um, the first thing is you'll sometimes get a message like this, or you'll get a message saying you're not allowed to open this because it's from an unidentified developer. Uh, that's easily addressed um, if you go to the security and privacy system preferences here um, and open it up um, with your password and then set it so that apps can be downloaded from, from anywhere. And once you've opened it once, it should work again uh, from there on out. Okay, so I'm going to say, yes, open this up, please. And here we go. So it launches two separate windows. Um, this is sort of a console window that you never really have to, to look at. Um, um, and then this is the main window here. And it uh, takes a while. There's a lot of audio samples that it's loading. So um, you need to wait a little bit. And it's best not to do anything with BitClavier while um, it's loading, especially loading presets or anything, which we'll get to later. Uh, it's just the system is not ready for it. However, you can, uh, while this is happening, just play your external keyboard um, to confirm that it's connected properly. If when you play it, you don't see the notation and the keyboard um, activating, then the device is not connected properly, and um, you'll need to, to sort that out. Um, one thing I can point out here right now as it's loading is that there's this menu for the input keyboard, and by default, uh, BitClavier will, will listen to anything that you're connected to. Uh, all devices. Now you can go in and you'll see the devices that are connected. So I've got this little keyboard connected right here. And if you don't see your device there, then it's just not connected properly to the computer. Um, if you select it, uh, an individual one, then it should only hear that one. And that's sometimes useful if you've got multiple devices that are connected to um, your computer. Okay, so now it's connected and um, I should be able to hear sound. Yay, that works. Um, so if it's not working, then um, you need to check your audio interface, your speakers, your headphones, whatever, to make sure you're getting sound properly. Um, it's possible sometimes in this window you'll find that there was an error and it never reached this point where it says the prepared digital piano is tuned and ready. In that case, uh, something maybe just didn't uh, work right when you when a BitClavier first opened, and yeah, you might need to quit it and try again. I don't find that that happens very often, uh, but especially the first time you run BitClavier, uh, that sometimes happens. And so just try it again, and if it's still not good, e rebooting is also an option. Um, okay, beautiful. So now it's working which is great. Now, uh, I think the first thing to do is to play around with some of the presets. The, uh, this uh, menu here uh, will by default load with a bank of presets, which are example presets for uh, BitClavier. So the BitClavier examples uh, bank uh, will be loaded. We've got all of these here, and you can step through these to try them out and see um, how they work. Uh, let me just go back to the BitClavier folder here. Those examples <coughs> are all described here so that you can go through and, and see what they do. <clears throat> I think that's actually the, probably the best way to, to get oriented with BitClavier is simply to step through um, and, and look through the instrument to see how it's working. <clears throat> now that said, um, you may not really care how it works. You may be here just to play some of the pieces that have been written. 
for bit clavier. Um, so for instance, if you're here to play the nostalgic synchronic etudes, you can go over to this left menu here. These are the banks of presets and open up the, uh, the nostalgic synchronic presets. And this whole menu will now update with the presets for uh, nostalgic synchronic. And you can set it for, say, Prelude 1, and um, you'll be good to go to play that one. Um, and then, again, if you're playing any of the others, you can, you can go ahead and, and do that as well. Um, finally, uh, if you uh, want to play some of the micro etudes, uh, all, all of them have their own sets of presets here. Um, so you can make a new, open up a new bank, and uh, let's see, I'll open up bank for Circleville, which has got four presets. Some of them have only one preset. Let's see, I think uh, Hurrah has only one preset. Um, and so by default, it will just work uh, once you've chosen the bank. So I'll go back now to the uh, examples. Uh, and I'm going to point out one other thing here. Um, the down and up arrows here will allow you to quickly move through the presets so that you can, without having to, to grab the trackpad or a mouse, you can quickly reset presets. Um, also, the left and right arrows will uh, open up the different sub-panels of BitClavier. Now, we're going to look at these different sub-panels in um, other tutorials, but like I said, the left and right arrows will allow you to page through those as well. So again, a handy way to get around uh, the instrument without having to um, work with a mouse or a trackpad. Okay, this little wheel here uh, has a, a few useful things in it. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to talk about the general settings where you can set some general characteristics for bit clavier, including you can set the tuning of the instrument in case you need to be at something other than A440. You can adjust some uh, parameters that are relevant to the individual preparations. We'll look at these later, uh, but for now, just remember that in the general settings, you can find these things uh, when we get to them later. Um, I have this option to turn off this ability to use the arrows in case that's inhibiting how you use your computer in some ways. Um, some manufacturers of, of keyboards and sustain pedals invert the way the pedal works and so sometimes you push the pedal down and and that actually is sustain off um, and so that's kind of annoying but if that's the case uh, you can just turn this uh, on and that should make the, the sustain pedal work properly. Now, this here is actually a, quite an interesting thing. Um, Bitclavier includes uh, resonance and hammer release samples, samples that are triggered when the keys are actually released. Um, and that actually can really make the instrument feel much more realistic and, um, and lifelike to play. Um, some pianists just can't play without it, actually. Um, so if we turn this on, um, you'd expect to hear something when I release. You don't, and you'll see this little note here that says this won't work when all devices is specified as the input. You must instead select a specific device, and that device must send true note-off MIDI messages. So some MIDI keyboards don't actually send note-off MIDI messages. Um, they send a note on with a velocity of zero, which is sort of annoying. But um, some keyboards, including this little one here, if I select it, my little LPK here, it actually sends proper note off. So you can hear if you listen closely. In fact, I'll make it louder so that we can really hear it loudly. Uh, I'm going to make this release hammer gain uh, one. And now when we release, you can hear the sound of the hammer very clearly. There's also a resonance that you can hear when uh, the keys are released. I'll uh, make it really loud so we can hear it. You can hear that ring along with the hammer. In fact, let me turn the hammer off so we can just hear the ring. So normally I set this to around 1 and this to 0.01, uh, which is 
seems to be good levels, but you can adjust them to, to be wherever you like them. Um, okay, so that's it for the uh, general settings. And let's, let's close these here. And uh, just two more things to, to point out here. Down at the bottom, there's an all notes off button in case for some reason some notes get hung on. I, I don't have to use this very often, but you can just hit this to shut everything off so it doesn't make any sound for the moment. Um, there's also a record button. This is a new feature for version two where you can just record to file what it is you're doing. So uh, if you press that, it'll prompt you for a file name. And so I'll put this on the desktop for now. Um, and so now it's recording. And I can press stop. And if I go back, oh, you can see it right on my screen over here. Uh, it actually automatically saves it as a WAV file and also makes an M4A much smaller file in case you want to share it really easily. Um, so there's the record button. And then the last two things I want to show you for um, this tutorial uh, is the, uh, the tuning menu and the tuning fundamental. So by default, the piano is in equal temperament. There are a handful of other tunings. So for instance, partial tuning is more like the overtones. How the overtones are tuned, which obviously sounds quite different than equal temperament. And you can also set the fundamental. So this was C fundamental. But I could also say set it to B over G, in which case that same is going to sound a little different. Let's go. Or let's go to. It's going to sound very different there. So these change the, the tuning for the main keyboard. Um, <clears throat> but by default, it will be in equal temperament with the fundamental of C. So that's it for now. Uh, we'll have more tutorials for all of these other uh, panels and different functionality for the instrument coming soon.